Today I want to share with you a master recipe for making medicinal herbal oils and herbal salves. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, today I'm continuing my series of videos where I'm sharing with you master recipes for how to make medicinal herbal remedies. First, we're going to use a master recipe to make a medicinal herbal oil. Then we're going to use that oil with a master recipe for making a medicinal herbal salve. Now, before we even get started, I just want to talk about pronunciation because I know the word salve is pronounced differently by different people. And I've heard from my friends, my British friends from across the pond, that in British English, you say solve for the medicinal ointment that we're going to make today. And American English says salve, I think. But to be honest with you, even though, yes, I'm an American and I speak American English, my parents always said solve. So that's something that I'm very used to. So whether you say solve or salve, having a medicinal herbal ointment is definitely something that you want to have in your herbal medicine cabinet. As I've shared in my other videos where I discuss herbal remedies, I just want to mention that if you're pregnant, if you're nursing, if you're thinking of using any herbal remedies with children, if you're taking medication, either prescription or over-the-counter, or even if you have allergies, especially those related to things like hay fever, you really want to talk to your medical practitioner to find out if the herbal remedies you're thinking of using are appropriate. Well, let's get started. Now, first of all, what I want to mention is that under the umbrella of a master recipe for making medicinal herbal oils, there are three ways that you can do this, and I'm going to cover all three. Now, when it comes to making medicinal herbal oils, I really like to use some type of olive oil. This is a California olive oil. You can use any olive oil that you like but I do recommend using an extra virgin olive oil. And the reason is I'm a firm believer whether we're gonna ingest it or we're gonna put it on our skin, we really want something that I consider to be the best that we can get, the best food grade that we can get. Now, some of you may be wondering about other oils. And generally when people are making uh, herbal oils that are used more for cosmetic purposes, they may not use olive oil because they may find that it's a little heavy or the bit of the olive oil fragrance, fragrance comes through. So you may see people using things like almond oil. But nut oils have a shorter shelf life than olive oil. So I tend to shy away from those when I'm making a medicinal oil or a medicinal salve, since I generally do want this to last for about a year and then just refresh it after one year and make another batch. Now, what type of medicinal herbal oil to make? You really can use any herb that you want for whatever purpose you're trying to achieve from that particular oil. For example, today we're going to use calendula because this is wonderful for the skin and wonderful if you have a little rash or a little cut, a little bruise, eczema, things like that. So that's what we're going to make. It's a very useful oil as well as a very useful oil to then turn into a salve. So we're going to go with calendula today. But you can use all kinds of herbs, specifically medicinal herbs. And in essence, pretty much every herb in one way or another is a medicinal herb. But you can use arnica if you want to make an arnica oil, which is wonderful for bruises and sprains and things like that. You can use lavender, which is wonderful uh, to help to use uh, for a headache or to help you if you're having a tough night sleeping. There are all different types of herbs that you can definitely use to make medicinal herbal oils out of. 
And if you want more detailed information on all the different herbs there are and all the different oils that you can make with them, I highly recommend any book by Rosemary Gladstar. She's a wonderful herbalist and her books are highly informative. And if you're new to all of this, you'll definitely want to check out her Be Beginner's Guide. This is what it looks like. This is her beginner's guide. It's Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, a beginner's guide. It teaches you how to know your herbs, how to recognize them, how to grow them, and how to use them. And she has all kinds of recipes in here for various medicinal remedies, not just for oils, not just for salves, but for teas and cough medicines, all kinds of things. I highly recommend this book. Now, as I shared earlier, there are three methods under the master recipe umbrella for making medicinal herbal oils. And if you want to do the first method, which we're just about to go over, you will need some type of jar. Now, what I like to use is a small jar. This is an eight ounce canning jar, and this is perfect for me. But you can certainly use a larger jar to make a larger amount of oil. But think about how much oil you may use over the course of the year, and if you want to have a variety of oils, possibly. And if you're going to be using your oil to make a salve, and how many salves you might be making. Because you don't want to over make oils, because as I had mentioned, this is probably going to stay fresh for just about one year. So I find this is about the perfect size for me. But definitely, if you want to double, triple, quadruple, you definitely can do that if you want to make a larger amount of medicinal herbal oil. Now this is my favorite way to make medicinal herbal oil, but it does require time. You're going to need about two weeks. So keep that in mind if you choose to make your medicinal herbal this way. All you want to do is simply take your dried herbs and put them into your jar and they don't need to be packed tightly. You can just fill it maybe about three quarters of the way full. It's really, it's relatively flexible. Definitely don't smash it down. Give them some room to move and, and just be, you know, very gentle in terms of when you're putting them into your jar. Now, if you want to use fresh herbs to do this, you definitely can. And you'll just want to go ahead and put them in your jar. But then if you have like a little muddler, or you could even just use a, a knife or a fork, you just want to break up the fresh herbs a little bit to help re start releasing some of their volatile or essential oils. Well, I think this is about a good amount to put in. As you see, I've just gone, you know, just a little bit below the rim and I've not, you know, pressed on them very hard at all. I do want to give them room to move around uh, within the oil. Next is the very easy part. All you have to do is just cover your herbs with your olive oil. So just continue pouring olive oil into your jar until you can cover all of your herbs and make sure that everything is under the oil. Now, once everything is covered, you're just going to put your lid on and now you're going to want to put this in a warm place for about two weeks. Can you put this on a sunny windowsill? Yes. I tend to just put it in a warm place because our sun is so strong here in central Texas, I almost feel it's a little too much for the herbs. However, that said, I want to share something very interesting with you about what herbalists say when it comes to making herbal oils in this way where you're leaving them in a warm place or a sunny windowsill or even outside in a sunny spot. Many people say, but doesn't the olive oil go rancid being kept warm and in the jar, in the sun, in the heat and so on and so forth? And what herbalists share is that because of all of the antioxidant properties in the herbs that are in the olive oil, it does keep the olive oil from going rancid. Now, when you strain out the herbs and you have your medicinal herbal oil already and just separated you know, from the herbs by itself, then herbalists say that's when you start the clock in terms of what the shelf life should be for your medicinal herbal oil. And generally, when using an olive oil, herbalist will say that your medicinal herbal oil may have a shelf life anywhere from 12 to 18 months. So that's method one for making a medicinal herbal oil. Now, I'm going to put this one aside, and this is one that I made previously. 
Now with your medicinal herbal oil that's been steeping for two weeks, what you'll want to do is get a very fine mesh strainer and some type of vessel to catch it in. I'm just using a metal, uh, I mean a glass measuring cup here. And all you're going to do is strain out your oil. Now, do you want to line this with cheesecloth or a coffee filter? You can, but those tend to start absorbing some of the oil, so I feel you'll lose a little bit of it. The secret so that you don't get a lot of debris down into the medicinal herbal oil that you're collecting is to not squeeze or press on the flowers. Or in this case, the guy using calendula flowers, but not press on whatever herb you're using. You're just going to want to gently let this drain out, give it plenty of time so that you can extract as much of the oil as you can. Then, on a separate vessel, if you want, you can start squeezing your herbs to extract even more oil. But as I said, that's, you're going to want to be collecting that in a separate vessel from this one. And the reason is that second pressing, so to speak, is going to start to get little bits of the debris of the dried herbs. And if you're going to want to use as pure an oil as possible, and one that you're going to use to maybe even go on to make a salve, which we're going to make in a minute, you're not going to want those little bits of debris. But that oil can still be very useful for other things where you're not thinking in terms of having such complete purity. If the herb that you're using to make this medicinal oil is an edible herb, then you can save that oil that may have those little bits and pieces in it to use for cooking or for making salad dressings. Once you think you've drained out most of your oil, you can just set this aside and then just get a bottle or jar, whatever way you want to store your oil. I might be able to do this without a funnel. Let's see if I can be neat about it. And then just go ahead and decant your wonderful medicinal herbal oil. Next, once you get it all decanted in, you can put your lid on, make sure your bottle is clean, and this is the perfect time to go and label it uh, for your calendula medicinal herbal oil. So making a medicinal herbal oil this way is basically the sun method, and you're going to need at least two weeks. So that's method number one. Now, method number two and three both involve using some type of electrical or gas or some type of heat. Now these type of medicinal herbal oils can be made in a lot shorter period of time, basically anywhere from one to two hours. Now to do this on the stove top, what you're going to need is some type of setup that you can create as a double boiler. Now if you've seen my video on where I like to collect kitchen treasures as I call them uh, from junk shops, you may recognize my Revereware pot and my stainless steel bowl. These both came from junk shops and cost practically nothing. Uh, the Revere Wear part was really in bad shape, but I cleaned it up and I like to have pots like this that I use specifically for when I am working with herbs and making home remedies and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you enjoy hunting for kitchen treasures at junk shops, I'll be sure to link to that video in the iCards and in the description below. But in any event, I like Revere wear because it has this little copper bottom so it helps keep the temperature uh, very even. And when we're making a medicinal herbal remedy using heat, it's very important that we keep even heat and low, very low heat. So how I like to do this is take my pot, put some water in it, and then get some type of bowl, like what I've got here, a stainless steel bowl. You may actually have an actual double boiler, which is fine as well. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll put my bowl right on top of my double boiler. And then I'm going to put my setting on my stove just to mint the lowest possible setting, which on this little cooktop is minimum. And so set it to your lowest setting. Now what if you don't have a double boiler or you don't have any setup like this where you can kind of make a mock double boiler? Can you do this directly on the stovetop? Yes, but again, you're going to need to be very, very careful about that. And depending on what type of stove you have, you may even have one of those pieces that you can put on top that are called diffusers that help diffuse some of the heat. You want to make sure that you're really not letting this get very hot. You want 
your herbs and oil to steep somewhere between maybe 95 degrees Fahrenheit to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you don't have a uh, thermometer to actually test that, basically that's the feeling of bath water. So you really uh, are looking for something that's more warm than hot. Now for the stovetop method, all you need to do is put your herbs into the top part of your double boiler. And if I use this method, generally what I do is do the same thing that I do with the sun method. I just measure out about three quarters to a cup's worth uh, of the herbs that I want to use and put those down into the top part of my double boiler. But regardless of how much you're making or what herbs you're using, you're just going to want to take your olive oil and you're just going to want to cover your herbs just in many ways as you did when you were if you were using the sun method you just want to make sure that everything <laughs> is saturated now once you pour your olive oil over your herbs in the top part of your double boiler and you've got all of those herbs saturated what you're going to do is go ahead and take this double boiler <laughs> the top of your double boiler my makeshift double boiler and you're going to put that on top of your pot of water a very low simmering water. Now what if you don't have a double boiler or you don't have any uh, way to set up a makeshift double boiler like this? Then you'll be putting your olive oil and your herbs directly into your pot. You'll be making sure that your herbs are covered with the olive oil and then again very very low simmer. Watch it carefully and you're really looking for something that doesn't get hot but just gets warm. Now there are differences of opinion on how long this should simmer, whether doing it directly on the stovetop or in a double boiler. Herbalists will vary and say anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. Some herbalists will even recommend when doing the double boiler approach, maybe going as long as one to two hours. But I think about 60 minutes is a good compromise for this and you will definitely know when it's getting close to being ready because the uh, aroma of the herbs, the volatile oils, the essential oils are really going to start being released and the, the oil you're going to feel is becoming very fragrant. That's a good sign that your medicinal herbal oil is getting close to being ready. And whether you're using dried herbs or fresh herbs, you can use this stovetop method. Just like whether you're using dried or fresh herbs, you can also use the sun method. And whenever you're using fresh herbs for the sun method or for this stovetop method, it is a good idea just to give them a little bit of a chop before uh, you proceed with covering them with the olive oil. And the reason is that really helps to uh, release some of the volatile and essential oils. It's not as important with the dried flowers or the dried herbs. Uh, they tend to release their oils a little easier. But with the fresh, definitely give them a little chop. But the most important thing to keep in mind when you do the stovetop method is that you're really looking at keeping all of this warm, not hot, no boiling, uh, nothing like that, because you don't want to do anything to damage those volatile or essential oils. Well, we'll go ahead and let that steep. And then the next method I want to talk about, the third method, is the oven method. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the oven method, but I wanted to share it with you because it is a method that is used by herbalists and that you may hear about. And so I wanted you to know that it is available to you and I wanted you to know how to do it. The oven method is best reserved for when making medicinal herbal oils using dry herbs. Now, all you need to do with the oven method is just get a shallow baking dish, put in the amount of dried herbs that you want, and then cover them with olive oil and make sure everything's saturated. Then you're going to go ahead and put that into your oven, setting your oven at its lowest setting, which depending on what type of oven you have may be somewhere between 150 degrees Fahrenheit to as high as 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And to a certain extent, this is why I'm not a huge fan of the oven method because I do feel that it is a little warm because most ovens can't go much below 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you have an oven with a pilot light and maybe the temperature is somewhere in the 
10 degree Fahrenheit range, that may be an option. Maybe uh, if you have an oven with an electric light and it too uh, maintains with the light on, uh, you know, both ovens are off, you're just going on the pilot light or the electric light and they maintain a temperature around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, that may be very useful as well. It, it's really one of these things where you're going to have to experiment if you want to do the oven method. And then that also leads us to another area that involves experimentation. Herbalists vary on their opinions on how long you should uh, keep your dried herbs in the olive oil in your oven to extract all of the volatile and essential oils that you'll need. So <laughs> it can be as little as 30 minutes. It can be as long as six hours. There's really a wide uh, variety of opinions on this. But if you decide that you feel you're not, and again, very similar to the stovetop method, it's really a matter of when you start to smell those aromas of those essential oils, of those volatile oils really being released from those dried herbs. And it is recommended that when you use the oven method, you do start checking uh, your herbs in that 30 to 60 minute time frame and maybe move them around a little in the oil, see how the fragrance is, the aroma, what exactly is going on with them. But that, so that's the oven method. So you may need a little more time than the stovetop method, but again, that's the third method that I wanted to share with you because it is out there and you may read about it and hear about it, but know that it's really not my first choice. My first choice is the sun method and my second choice is when I'm in a little bit of a hurry is the stovetop method. Well, this is becoming very fragrant. So I'm going to turn my heat off and now let me see. Yes, yeah, it's just warm. I can definitely handle this. And then we're just going to strain out our medicinal herbal oil. And now we've got another batch via the stovetop method of our medicinal herbal oil. We can just go ahead and decant this and we're all set. Now, I just wanna talk about some problems that you may run into. And so this way we'll cover them here. And that way, if you're making this oil and then over the next couple of weeks, as you're storing this, you see some things happening in your jar and so, or in your bottle. And I wanna give you some tips on how to prevent problems. What's most likely to happen, especially if you've used fresh herbs, is that you may find that there is some moisture in your oil. And that moisture, when it's in a bottle like this with a lid, may cause some condensation. And then that condensation will drip down into your oil and that can create a problem for spoilage, a problem for the, develop the development of mold. A way to prevent that problem is by putting something between the bottle or jar and the lid that will, do, will uh, absorb any moisture. You could use a little bit of cheesecloth. You could use a little bit of the flour sack towels that I'm very fond of using. Uh, when I strain my bone broth and things like that, you can cut a little square of that and use that. Or you can use some, something as simple as just a plain old coffee filter. And you could even double this over if you think that you might have, you know, or, or even, what would that be? Quadrupling over. <laughs> if you think that uh, moisture might be a real problem. And then just put your lid on. And now you're all set. You've got something that's going to absorb any moisture and this is really going to have help cut down on any potential spoilage or mold development. Now you can go ahead and store this medicinal herbal oil away, it preferably in a dark cool pantry. Now I am using a clear bottle here so that you could see exactly what we were doing. However, if you have any dark bottles, like what I share for you that I hunt for in the garbage, uh, but whenever you might see neighbors or friends that are throwing away uh, dark bottles, either dark green or dark brown, and uh, they're just putting them in their recycling bin and whatnot, you could ask them if you could have them because dark bottles are gonna be your best bottles to store away any medicinal herbal uh, oils that you make.
So store this away in your cool pantry and it should stay fresh for about 12 months. And I want to share one more tip with you regarding medicinal herbal oils. When you smell your oil, it should smell very fresh, very herby, very pleasant. If you ever go to smell your herbal oil and you really find it very off-putting, uh, some people may immediately recognize it as rancid. But if it is very off-putting, chances are it has gone rancid and do not use it. Even used externally, it is not good for you to ever use rancid oil, whether to ingest it or to use it on your skin. Another question you may have, which I want to address, is can you mix herbs to make a mixed medicinal herbal oil? And yes, you can definitely do that. What you'll want to do is, when I talked about earlier, Rosemary Gladstar's books on herbs, or really any uh, herbalist that you like, read about the combinations that are very complementary. Com uh, by complementary, I mean herbs that work well together because they have similar properties to help with particular ailments or particular uh, remedies that you need for whatever you're trying to use your herbal oil for. For example, herbs that go together very nice are chamomile and calendula and lavender. They're all very good for the skin and they're very healing. And then they also have additional properties in the case of chamomile and lavender that help with sleep. So sometimes if you're having maybe some foot irritation, maybe you've got a little rash on your foot and you want to put something on your feet at night, a mixture of, uh, of an herbal oil that also has herbs in it that not only help the skin but also help with sleep are very complementary and can work very nicely together. And this is the type of thing that you really learn over time by reading more books that discuss all of the various properties of herbs and which herbs work well together. Now let's move on and use this medicinal herbal oil, specifically our calendula medicinal herbal oil, to make a medicinal herbal salve. Now, for the master recipe for making a medicinal herbal salve, you want to have one cup of your medicinal herbal oil and one quarter cup of beeswax. Now, when it comes to the beeswax, you can have little beeswax pellets like what I have here, or if you have a solid piece of beeswax, you can just grate that. Now, as I said, the master recipe is one cup of your medicinal herbal oil and a quarter cup of beeswax. However, I'm going to cut that in half because I want to make a smaller portion. So I'm going to use a half cup of my medicinal herbal oil and an eighth of a cup of beeswax. Now this is generally done on the stovetop, and generally it's best done on a double boiler. And like we did with the oil, I've just got my makeshift double boiler here, which is going to work perfectly. But if you want to do it directly in your pot, on your stove, again, just be very careful with it. You can put your medicinal herbal oil in here. You can put your beeswax in here and you're just going to watch it carefully. You're going to want to keep everything on its lowest setting. Now I'm just going to go ahead and measure out my half cup of my medicinal herbal oil. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour this right into the top of my double boiler. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my eighth of a cup of my beeswax pellets. I'm going to add those right down into my oil. And once I get all those in, I'm going to put my burner here on my lowest setting. And I'm just going to watch this. And once I'm going to give it a little stir, and I'm going to keep my eye on it. And once all the beeswax is melted, I'll remove it from the heat. Well, I've just let that beeswax melt in the olive oil and periodically I've given it a little stir. It's pretty much all melted now, just a few little pieces. I've already turned the heat off because the water underneath is nice and warm. And I'm just going to continue to stir this until the little bits and bobs of <laughs> beeswax that are left over will continue to melt. Well, all the beeswax is melted, and now what we need to do is our test. Now, don't skip this step, 
because this is what's going to guarantee that you're going to have a perfect solve. You're going to want to get a plate and then you're going to want to take about a teaspoon or so of your medicinal herbal salve in the making and you're going to want to go ahead and put that, just pour it right down onto your plate. And then what we're going to do is pop this into the freezer for about a minute. Well, I just took this out of the freezer and the reason that we do this test is because we want to see what the consistency of our solve will be once it cools. If when you do this test, your solve seems a little runny, don't worry. You can just start adding a little more beeswax to it. If you find that your solve is really hard and almost too thick to spread, then you can just add a little bit of olive oil and then do the test again. And chances are on that second pass, you're gonna have the perfect solve. Now the consistency of this solve is perfect. I can get some on my finger here very easily and it rubs in beautifully, it spreads beautifully on my skin. Since I'm happy with the consistency of this solve, I'm gonna go ahead and add this little bit back into my a warm salve here because I don't want to waste anything. Now just so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to pour this medicinal herbal salve into a clear jar. This is just a little four ounce canning jar, but what I recommend is if you have a dark glass jar, all the better. And some people also like to put them into the little uh, stainless steel tins. If you've got one of those, that's great too. Always being able to protect these from light protects the essential oils that are in our medicinal herbal oil as well as our medicinal herbal salves. So the more that we can protect them from light and from heat, the better. So if you have a dark colored jar or a little stainless steel tin, and then you go ahead and store it in a cool dark place, you're all set. Now, what if you wanna kick up the intensity, so to speak, of your salve? Can you go ahead and add in some essential oil to this salve? Yes, you can certainly do that. And again, you just want to be aware of what essential oils would be most complementary to the medicinal herbal oil that you've made and that you're now turning into a salve. So for example, if you wanted to put some lavender into this, you could definitely do that. And I would really start on the small side as opposed to the larger side. And when I say small side, I mean in terms of drops. With just a half a cup of oil like I've used here, I would probably start with only using about 10 drops of an essential oil of my choice. If I had done the full cup, then maybe I would have done 20 drops of essential oil. But it's often best to start on the lower end than the higher end because essential oils are very strong. Well, this is definitely just warm, definitely easy enough to handle, which is what we want. We never want to get these things too hot. And then what I'm going to do is see if I can just gently do this without a funnel and get this into my container. I'm going to let this cool off. It'll firm up. I'll put the cap on and then I'll go ahead and store it in my medicinal herb cabinet. Now, if you'd like more master recipes for making herbal remedies, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a playlist with lots of wonderful, easy to make herbal remedies and how to use them. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.